Welcome back to my channel. So our topic for today will be cash to accrual pa din. But make sure na before mo panoorin ang video na to, panoorin mo muna yung discussion natin sa concepts ng cash and accrual. Because in this video, puro problems na lang ang ating sasagutan. Luanag ba? So before we start, once again, this video is sponsored by NICE Online CPA Review. So, NICE Online CPA Review offers various programs for CPA aspirants at a reasonable price. So, please make sure to follow and to like their page that is uh, indicated on the description below. Okay? So, here, punta na ngayon tayo sa illustrative problem number one. So, illustrative problem number one, NICE Company provided the following information for the current year. So, what's the requirement? The requirement here is how much is the net sales under the cash basis and accrual basis. Wanag? So, sabi natin dun sa video natin or dun sa past video natin, sales under the cash basis is ano nga ulit? That is the cash sales and the collection of credit sales because under the cash basis of accounting, Income are recognized when received. While under the accrual basis of accounting, sales is actually equal to the cash sales and the total credit sales. Because under the accrual basis of accounting, income are recognized when received, ah, when earned regardless of when received. So here, meron daw tayong cash sales, gross is 2 million, Returns and allowances is 100,000. Credit sales, meron tayong gross 3 million. Discounts is 150. So, according to the problem, customers owed 1 million on January 1 and 750 on December 31. So, ibig sabihin yun yung ating accounts receivable. So, ilagay natin. Paano nga ulit tayo mag-compute? Sabi natin kanina, AR or trade receivables at the beginning plus the credit sales minus collections minus the sales discount minus the sales returns and allowance minus write-off makukuha natin si trade receivables or si accounts receivable at the end so AR at the beginning is equal to 1 million pesos. AR at the end of the period is equal to 750,000. We're good. Next, ano pang given? Credit sales is equal to 3 million. So, ilalagay natin dito, 3 million pesos. Sales discount given din, that's 150,000. So, ilalagay natin dito, minus 150,000. Sales returns and allowances, walang given. So, zero yan. Right off, wala rin given. So, ilalagay din natin dito. Zero. Ano na ba? Sir, meron pong sales returns and allowances na given. That's 100,000. Yes, tama ka dun. Pero, usapan natin sa past video, yung sales returns and allowances kasi nakasama lang dito is yung mga galing sa credit memos. Yung sales returns and allowances dyan, nang galing siya sa cash sales, that is why hindi natin nilagay. Alright? So, squeeze natin ngayon yung ating collection. Okay ba tayo dun? So, calculator. 750,000. Again, this is 750,000. Right? Pa-squeeze. So, pabaliktad tayo. So, plus 150,000. Minus 3 million and minus 1 million. So, minus 3 million and minus 1 million. This is equal to 3.1 million pesos. So, our collections now is equal to 3.1 million pesos. Very good? Alright. So, since sabi nga natin the total sales, once again, total sales under the cash basis of accounting is, ano nga ulit? Cash sales plus what? Plus the collection of credit sales. Manag. So, since cash sales natin is 2 million, then we collected a total 
of 3.1 million, expect now na meron tayong total sales and that is equal to 5.1 million pesos. Again, total sales is 5.1. While under the accrual basis of accounting, total sales is actually different. Why? Because here, under the accrual basis of accounting, total sales is actually equal to the cash sales plus the total credit sales. So, cash sales natin is equal to 2 million while credit sales, i-add natin yan ng buo and that is equal to 3 million pesos. So, our total sales now under the accrual basis of accounting is equal to 5 million pesos. Right? But 5.1 and 5 million are not our final answers. Why? Because ang tinatanong dito is yung net sales. So since net sales ang tinatanong, we just have to deduct the sales discount and the sales returns and allowances. So minus sales discount and minus sales returns and allowance. And then this time, gaya ng napag-usapan natin sa past video, yung SRA na binabawas natin will be both the SRA coming from the refunds and credit memos. Right? So sales discount is 150000 while sales returns and allowances is equal to Ah, 100,000. So, minus 150 and minus 100,000. So, our net sales now under the cash basis of accounting is magkano? Calculator. That is equal to 5.1 million minus 150,000 and minus 100,000 or this is equal to 4,850,000. Then, under the accrual basis of accounting, this is 5 million pesos minus 150,000 and minus 100,000 or this is equal to 4,750,000. So final answer, illustrative problem number 1 is equal to 4,850 and 4,750 respectively under the cash basis and accrual basis of accounting. And that is illustrative problem number 1. We good? Now, punta tayo sa illustrative problem number 2. So here, in illustrative problem number 2, the requirement is under the cash basis of accounting, what amount should be reported as sales revenue? So NICE company reported sales revenue of 4.6 million in the income statement for the year ended December 31, 2023. Meaning, if nagikita siya sa income statement, that is the one that is generally accepted. Meaning, that is the sales revenue under the accrual basis of accounting. Then here, given are the accounts receivable and the allowance for doubtful accounts at the beginning and at the end of the year. December 31, 2022 is also the same sa January 1, 2023. That's why it is considered as the beginning of 2023. The entity wrote off uncollectible accounts totaling 20,000 during 2023. So, squeeze lang ulit tayo dito. Remember, na ang uh, sales revenue natin under the cash basis of accounting is just the cash collection because we recognize income under the cash basis of accounting when received. So, squeeze natin dito kung magkano ba yung ating nakolekta. So, formula ulit. We have ER at the beginning not NRV, alright? Outstanding balance po ito ng accounts receivable, not the amortized cost or net realizable value, meaning we don't deduct here the allowance for doubtful accounts. Panggulo lang yun actually, right? So, meron tayong Accounts receivable at the beginning, which is equal to 1 million pesos. Tama ba? Ina-add natin dyan, right? Yung total sales under the accrual basis of accounting and that is equal to 4.6 million. 
Because kapag nakabenta ka, madadagdagan ng AR natin. That is also based sa journal entries na pinakita natin on the last video. Then we deduct here the collections, which is later on, i-squeeze natin because ito yung kinoconsider nating sales under the cash basis of accounting. Then we deduct as well the written off accounts and write off is equal to 20 Right? Then, meron tayo ditong accounts receivable at the end and that is equal to 1.3 million. So, squeeze natin kung magkano yung collection, negative amount ang nakocompute mo dapat dyan. So, calculators, 1.3 million plus kasi squeeze. So, pabaliktad na. So, plus 20,000 Minus 4.6 million pesos. Then minus 1 million pesos. Total collections now is equal to 4,280,000. So 4,280,000 is our final answer for illustrative problem number 2. Again, illustrative problem number 2. 4,280,000 is our final answer because always remember that under the cash basis of accounting, income is actually recognized when received. So, magkaiba sila ng timing ni accrual. Now, punta tayo dito sa illustrative problem number 3. So, here in illustrative problem number 3, NICE Company provided the following data for the current year. The question here, is what amount should be reported as purchases under the cash basis of accounting. So given are the sales, cost of goods sold, and operating expenses. So dun muna tayo sa cost of goods sold. Why? Because cost of goods sold computation is actually equal to the beginning inventory plus purchases to compute the total goods available for sale. Then, minus ending inventory, compute natin si cost of goods sold. So, i-squeeze natin dito yung purchases, but see to it that these purchases are actually the purchases under the accrual basis of accounting. Meaning, whether paid or unpaid, kasama yung purchases dyan. Pero, ang tinatanong dito is kung magkano daw ba yung binayaran natin, right? Because, ang tinatanong is yung reported under the cash basis of accounting because under the cash basis of accounting cash flow lang ang nagmamatter Anag? so cost of goods sold is equal to 5.3 million then here meron tayong inventory at the beginning that is equal to 2.1 million then at the end of the year ending inventory is equal to magkano yan? 2.5 million pesos. So, squeeze natin ulit. Five, calculator, 5.3 plus 2.5 makukuha natin si total goods available for sale and that is 7.8 million. And then, minus 2.1 million makukuha natin si purchases and that is equal to 5.7 million Luanag. now ano nga ulit ang computation natin ng purchases that is accounts payable at the beginning plus the purchases minus the payments then minus purchase discount and purchase returns and allowances which is wala namang given sa problem compute natin yung accounts payable at the end so ang gusto natin dito is yung payments because these payments are actually the purchases under the cash basis of accounting so accounts payable at the beginning is equal to 1.2 million pesos Purchases as a squeeze a while ago is equal to 5.7 million. Then accounts payable at the end 
is equal to 1,350,000. So let's squeeze magkano ba yung payments. So 1,350 minus 5,7 then minus 1.2 million the amount of purchases now is equal to 5,550,000 and once again these are the reported purchases under the cash basis of accounting so 5,550,000 is our final answer for illustrative problem number 3 sir bakit negative kaya yan negative yan because naka minus dito yung payments sa ating computation So, punta ngayon tayo sa illustrative problem number 4. So, here in illustrative problem number 4, NICE company reported that all insurance premiums paid are debited to prepaid insurance. The entity made monthly estimated charges to insurance expense with credit to prepaid insurance. Then, we have prepaid insurance at the beginning charges to insurance expense during the year, then we have prepaid insurance at the end. So, what is the insurance premium paid during 2023? So, these are with regards to the expenses other than helpful accounts expense and depreciation expense. So, sabi ko nga sa other video ko, our starting point will be the expense under the cash basis of accounting and then dito, prepaid and given. Ang kinakabisado natin is yung accrued because ang accrued at the end ina-add po yun. Accrued at the beginning nililess then kabalik tar na lang kapag prepaid. Ibig sabihin niyan, if accrued at the beginning is mina minus, prepaid at the beginning now will be added then prepaid at the end will be deducted. Lanag ba yun? So once again kapag hindi mo pa napapanood yung first video natin sa cash to accrual dun ka muna para malaman mo yung mga concepts behind these procedures compute na natin dito si expenses under the accrual basis of accounting so here prepaid expense at the beginning is equal to 210,000 prepaid expense at the end is equal to 245,000 pesos and then expense under the accrual basis of accounting is equal to 875,000. So squeeze natin ulit yung expenses under the cash basis of accounting because ang tinatanong dito is kung magkano yung binayaran. So 875,000 plus 245,000 minus 210,000 this will give us 910,000 pesos. So, final answer, illustrative problem number 4 is equal to 910,000 pesos. Next, punta tayo sa so, illustrative problem number 5. Here in illustrative problem number 5, ang tinatanong dito is what total amount was paid for operating expenses. So, during the current year, NICE company reported total operating expenses of 3.5. 2 million consisted of 1 million depreciation, 700,000 insurance, and 1.5 million salaries. The prepaid insurance is 150 on January 1 and 200 on December 31. The accrued salaries payable totaled 120 on January 1 and 100 on December 31. So, kunin muna natin kung magkano ba yung salaries natin under the cash basis of accounting. So, meron tayo dito expense ulit or salaries expense under the cash basis of accounting. Then, this time, meron tayong given accrued expense beginning and ending. Then, meron din given the prepaid expense beginning and ending. Then, sa baba, will be the salaries expense under the accrual basis of accounting. So, here, under the accrual basis of accounting, salaries expense is equal to 1.5 million pesos. 
Ang tinatanong dito is kung magkano ang binayaran natin na operating expense, therefore, right, kailangan mong i-squeeze kung magkano ba yung salaries expense under the cash basis of accounting. So here, meron daw tayong prepaid insurance at the beginning na 150,000. Prepaid insurance at the end is equal to 200,000. Accrued expense at the beginning is equal to 120,000. Then accrued expense at the end is equal to 100,000. So once again, isa lang ang kinakabisado natin dyan, which is the accrued expense at the end. Accrued expense at the end is added, kabaliktaran nyo ng beginning. So, minus natin yung beginning. Then, ang accrual, kabaliktaran lang siya ng prepayments. So, if accrued beginning is dinididak, prepaid beginning is now added. If accrued end, in-add, prepaid end now is dinididak. The reasons behind kung ina-add ba yan or did it is discussed on my other video. Right? So here, magkano po yung expenses natin under the cash basis of accounting? This is equal to 1.5 million plus 200,000 minus 150,000 minus 100,000 then plus 120,000 or this is equal to 1 million 500,000. 70,000 Anak So salaries Expenses Paid Is now equal to 1,570,000 Next Meron din tayong insurance Wala namang sinabi Na meron tayong prepaid And accrued sa insurance So ibig sabihin Yung insurance given dyan Is considered paid So insurance expense paid Is equal to 7,000 100,000 Of course, depreciation is a non-cash expense Meaning, hindi po yun binabayaran Therefore, the total payments now For operating expenses is now only equal to 1,570 plus 700,000 Or this is equal to 2,270,000 So, final answer Illustrative problem number 5 is 2,200,000 70,000 Next, punta tayo sa illustrative problem number 6 So, ang tinatanong dito is kung magkano daw ba yung cash na nareceive from rental So, under the accrual basis NICE company reported rental income for the current year at 600,000 The entity reported the following additional information regarding rental income So, this time, income naman other than sales ang ating pinag-uusapan So once again, ang taas natin is always the income under the cash basis of accounting. Kahit na yan yung tinatanong, we just have to squeeze this one. Right? Squeeze natin yan later on. Then dito, meron tayong accrued income, beginning and ending. Then meron din tayong deferred or unearned income, beginning and ending para makompute natin of course yung ating income under the accrual basis of accounting eh that is given and that is equal to 600,000 so ang kinocompute natin talaga yung nasa taas meaning squeeze ulit tayo so accrued at the end sabi nga natin kanina ina-add yan while accrued at the beginning dinididak yan right then kabaliktaran sa deferral Meaning, kung beginning, dinididok, beginning ng deferral, ina-add, and then ng ending, ang ating dinididok. So here, unearned rental income at the beginning is 50,000. Unearned or deferred rental income at the end of the period is equal to 75,000 pesos. Accrued income at the beginning is 30,000. Then, accrued income at the end is equal to 40,000. So, squeeze natin ulit kung magkano yung income under the cash basis of accounting because that is the rent amount of rental income paid during the year. So, calculator. 600,000 plus 75,000 minus 50,000 minus 40,000 then plus 30,000 or this will give us 615,000 pesos.
So, final answer, illustrative problem number 6 is equal to 615,000 pesos. Now, punta tayo sa illustrative problem number 7. So, here, in illustrative problem number 7, NICE Corporation accounts for its sales under the cash basis. Total collections from customers including cash sales made and recoveries of previously written of accounts based on NICE Corporation's comp cash receipts books amounted to 1.4 million. Audit investigation revealed the following additional information. So, compute the following under the accrual basis of accounting ang tinatanong dito. So, anag ba yan? So, here, compute, lagay muna natin yung ating formula. That is the trade receivables at the beginning. Na-discuss na natin to dun sa prior video. Plus, sales were in. Gross ang nakocompute dito at ini-squeeze natin yan. So, anag? Then, minus sales discount minus collections minus sales returns and allowance na dapat credit memo lang then minus the written of accounts mako-compute natin yung ano no mako-compute dito mako-compute natin si trade receivables at the end right so, trade receivables at the beginning is equal to the accounts receivable at the beginning, which is equal to 100,000. And notes receivable trade at the beginning, which is equal to 80,000. So, that will give us 180,000 pesos. Sales, nawawala nga yan. Sales discounts taken by customers is equal to 40,000 pesos. So, lalagay natin dito, minus 40,000. Collections, on the other hand, according to the problem, is equal to 1.4 million. Pero, always keep in mind na sa collection, dapat tinatanggal po doon yung recovery because sabi ko nga sa last video, hindi kasama yung recoveries kasi wala siyang effect sa total sales. And sa total AR. So, ibig sabihin, 1.4 million now. Minus the recoveries, which is, magkano recoveries? That's 10,000. Or, ang ilalagay lang natin na collections is equal to 1,390,000. Next, we have sales returns. Before collections were made, evidenced by a credit memo, which is equal to 25,000. At yun lang ang ating ididak. Because the next sales returns is refunds. Sabi dito, sales returns after collections were made, thus refunds were given. So, hindi yun kasama. Then, written off of worthless accounts receivable is 30,000. So, minus 30,000. Then, magkano trade receivables at the end? That is equal to the AR at the end, which is 140,000 plus notes receivable at the end, which is 90,000. Or, this is equal to 230,000. So, squeeze natin ngayon yung ating gross sales. So, gross sales now is equal to 230,000 plus 30,000 plus 25,000 plus 1,390 plus 40,000 and then minus 180,000 or this is equal to 1,500,000. 35,000. So, requirement number one, gross sales for the year, 1,535,000 is our final answer. Very good. Requirement number two will be the net sales for the year. Net sales will just be equal to the gross sales, which is 1,535,000. Minus the sales discounts, which are equal to 40,000. Then, minus sales returns and allowances. And then, this time, sabi nga natin sa prior video ko, we don't care whether credit memo man yan or cash refunds. Meaning, the total sales returns and allowance will be deducted. And that's 25 plus 5, or that's equal to 30. 
20,000 pesos. So, our net sales now will be equal to how much? Magkano net sales natin? This is equal to 1,535 minus 40,000 and minus 30,000 or this is equal to 1 million. 465,000. So, requirement number 2, 1465, is our final answer. Then, requirement number 3, yung tinatanong dito, is actually the uncollectible accounts expense for the year, assuming that the required allowance for uncollectible accounts were 21,000 and 35,000 at the beginning and at the end of the year, respectively. Wanag? So, meron tayong allowance for doubtful accounts at the beginning, which, according to the problem, is equal to 21,000 pesos. Then, of course, doubtful accounts expense, ina-add yan, pero, i-squeeze natin yan because yan yung tinatanong. Then, minus, written off accounts, which, according to the problem as well, is equal to 30,000 Plus, recoveries of written off accounts which is equal to 10,000. So, yung recoveries, wala siyang effect sa AR pero sa allowance, meron siyang effect. And makukompute natin dito si allowance for doubtful accounts at the end of the year which is actually equal to 35,000 pesos. So, magkano ngayon yung doubtful accounts expense natin? This is equal to 35,000 minus 10,000 plus 30,000 then minus 21,000 or this is equal to 34,000 pesos. That is why requirement number 3, 34,000 is our final answer. Now, punta tayo sa illustrative problem number 8. So, here ang tinatanong is the cost of goods sold under the accrual basis. So, the records of your audit client, NICE Corporation, which maintains records under cash basis, revealed total payments made to suppliers of merchandise amounted to 1 to 50. Further investigation revealed the following additional information. So, meron ulit tayo ditong trade payables this time kasi purchases na at the beginning plus purchases. Ma. Then minus the payments Minus the purchase discount Kung meron man And minus the purchase returns and allowance Makukompute natin si Trade payables at the end of the year Ang gagawin natin dito is Kailangan natin i-squeeze si purchases Because kakailanganin natin siya Sa computation ng cost of goods sold So trade payables at the beginning Is equal to the accounts payable at the beginning of 75,000 plus the notes payable trade at the beginning of 57,000 or this is equal to 132,000 pesos. Trade payables at the end on the other hand is equal to the accounts payable at the end of 108,000 plus the accounts payable or notes payable trade at the end which is equal to 42,000. Or this is equal to 150,000. Total payments na sa heading, that's 1,250,000. Purchase discounts according to the problem is 45,000. And then purchase returns and allowance, credit memo lang. Dalawang given dito, alamin natin alin dyan ang credit memo. Una, Purchase returns before any payments were made, thus credit memos were received from the supplier. So, minus 55,000 because yun lang ang ating ginagamit kapag gross purchases ang kinocompute. Once again, kapag gross sales and gross purchases, credit memo lang po ang ating ginagamit. Pero kapag net sales or net purchases, both credit memo and cash refunds kasama. So, dito... Purchase returns after payments were made, the cash was received from suppliers, are not yet included in our computation. Because the net purchases nga siya, kakailanganin. So, let's squeeze the gross purchases. This is equal to 150,000 plus 55,000 
plus right 45,000 plus 1250 then minus 132,000 or this is equal to 1,368,000 okay so Next, compute natin yung net purchases. So, from the gross purchases of 1,368,000, we will just deduct here the purchase discount and the purchase returns and allowances. Normally, trade in is added, but in this problem, walang given, not trade in. So, wala tayong trade in na i-add. Purchase discounts, once again, is equal to 45,000. And purchase returns and allowance in total is equal to 55 coming from the credit memos and 25 from refunds. Or that will give us a total of 80,000 pesos. So our net purchases now is equal to 1368 minus 45,000 and then minus 80,000 or this is equal to 1,243,000. Hindi pa yan yung tinatanong. Ang tinatanong dito is the cost of goods sold. So, cost of goods sold once again is equal to the beginning inventory and that is equal to 189,000 plus net purchases which is equal to 1,243,000. Makukompute natin si total goods available for sale, which is equal to magkana yan, guys? Magkana yan? 189,000 plus 1,243, or this is equal to 1,432,000. Then minus ending inventory, and that is equal to 243,000 makukompute na natin si cost of goods sold so 1432 minus 243,000 cost of goods sold now is equal to 1,189,000 so 1189 will be the final answer here in illustrative problem number 8 next punta tayo sa illustrative problem number 9 so, during the year ended December 31, 2023, NICE Company paid interest totaling 100,000. The prepaid interest expense is 23,500 and 18,000 respectively on December 31, 2022 and 2023. Interest payable is 45 and 535 respectively as well at the beginning and at the end. So, ang tanong dito is the interest expense under the accrual basis of accounting because accrual basis of accounting is the method we use in reporting the information to the public because that is the one that is generally accepted. Right? So, meron tayo dito uh, expense under the cash basis of accounting and according to the problem, magkano yun? That is equal to 100,000 because yun yung total na binayaran natin. And then, meron tayo ditong prepaid expense. So, meron tayong prepaid expense. Of course, beginning and ending. Magkano yun? Beginning is equal to 23,500. While ending is equal to 18,000 pesos. Meron din tayong accrued expense at the beginning and at the end of the year, which is magkano? 45,000 yung beginning, while yung end natin is equal to 53,500. So the expense now under the accrual basis of accounting will be how much? Right? So, alamin muna natin kung add ba to or minus. Sabi nga natin, isa lang ang kinakabisado dyan. That's the crude expense at the end. That is added. So, kung added ang at the end, at the beginning now will be deducted. If at the end sa crude is added, at the end sa prepaid will be deducted. Kabaliktaran. 
if minus ang beginning dito, add naman ang beginning sa prepaid. So, magkano ngayon yung accrual natin or expense under accrual? That's 100,000. 100,000 plus 23,500 minus 18,000 minus 45,000 then plus 53,500 or that's equal to 114,000 pesos. So, illustrative problem number 9, 114,000 will be our final answer. Then, last problem will be illustrative problem number 10. So, during 2023, NICE company acquired patent, right, and remitted royalties of 3 million. The entity reported prepaid royalties of 550 and 450 and royalties payable of 800 and 750 respectively at the beginning and at the end of 2023. So the requirement here is kung magkano daw ba yung royalty expense natin under the accrual basis of accounting. So kamukha lang neto. Ay na ba? Okay na? Alright. So meron tayong expense under the cash basis of accounting which sabi natin expense under cash basis are the one paid. So here if we paid or we remitted 3 million pesos 3 million now will be the expense under the cash basis of accounting. Then, meron tayo ditong prepaid expense ulit or prepaid royalties at the beginning and at the end. Then, meron din tayong accrued expense. These are the royalties payable at the beginning and at the end. Sir, bakit po yung royalties payable kinonsider mo as accrued expense? Kinonsider ko yun as accrued expense because ang definition ng accrued expense are actually the same sa royalties payable. Why? Because accrued expense, these are the expenses already incurred but not yet paid. Kamukha lang yun ng royalties payable. Expenses incurred but not yet paid. So sabi natin, beginning prepaid is added, ending is deducted. Beginning accrued is deducted, ending is added. So here, Prepaid at the beginning is 550. Prepaid at the end is equal to 450,000. Accrued or royal payable at the beginning is 800,000. While at the end, it is only equal to 750,000. So royalty expense now under the accrual basis of accounting is equal to 3 million pesos plus 550,000 minus 450,000 minus 800,000 then plus 750,000 or this is equal to 3,050,000. So that is the final answer for illustrative problem number 10. So this is the end of this video. Hopefully natuto ka sa two-part lecture natin about cash and accrual. Once again, these videos are sponsored by NICE Online CPA Review. Thank you guys once again for supporting these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell just for you to get notified every time na nag upload ako ng mga videos. Please also share these videos to others. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.